Gabriel Amoth was a Catholic priest and the chief exorcist of the Vatican. He was born in Modena, Italy in 1925 and was ordained a priest in 1954. Amorth became involved in exorcism in the 1980s and was appointed as the chief exorcist of the Vatican in 1986, a position he held until his passing in 2016. Amorth was known for his outspoken views on the subject of possession and the practice of exorcism. He estimated that he had personally conducted tens of thousands of exorcisms during his career and was a strong advocate for the Catholic Church's teachings on the reality of the devil and the need for exorcisms. Perhaps one of the most terrifying things he said during his life was that he believed the devil was inside the Vatican. In an interview with the Italian newspaper La Repubblica, Father Gabriele Amorth, a leading exorcist in the Catholic Church, defends his work, as well as that of the Association of Exorcists. According to Amorth, although the devil is not omnipresent, his presence can cause immense pain and suffering. The ritual of exorcism is a complex and challenging process that requires the full will of a man, and detailed that this can have physical and psychological effects on the human body, many of which you never recover from. As per his claim, he has successfully treated more than 70,000 cases of demonic possession. The evil spirit is believed to be pure spirit, and thus is considered invincible. When a person is possessed by the devil, they are often heard blurting out painful blasphemies. It is also said that the devil can remain hidden for long periods of time and can speak in different languages. These attributes of the devil are widely acknowledged, but those involved in this phenomena have said that you need to be incredibly well versed in order to be able to take on this entity. According to Father Amorth, he has the ability to transform himself, but at the time admitted that he was not scared of this gift. During his time as an exorcist, he carried around artifacts in a small pouch and believed that God had chosen him for this work. However, when he was asked if the devil could strike inside Vatican City, Father Amoth became serious and started to show slight discomfort. Despite his fearlessness, at the time he understood the gravity of the question and the potential consequences of such an encounter with this entity. This highlights the importance of spiritual protection in even the most holy of places. The individual in question has a history of attempts to cause harm to religious figures, particularly those of the Catholic faith. Back in 1981, Father Amorth detailed that the devil attacked John Paul II. Father Amorth said that although this dark entity was inside the Vatican, he never feared it and always felt like God was behind him. He said that it's for this reason that he kept the position of lead exorcist for so long, and detailed that many people were cured during his time at the church, noting that after they were fixed, they never exhibited any other problems. Demonic possession is a topic that is often debated, and opinions may vary depending on cultural, religious and scientific beliefs. From a religious or spiritual perspective, demonic possession is typically seen as a serious and real phenomenon that requires intervention from a trained exorcist or spiritual leader. In some cultures, such as those with strong belief in the supernatural, demonic possession is taken very seriously and treated as a legitimate concern. From a scientific perspective, there is little evidence to support the existence of demonic possession. The symptoms attributed to possession can often be explained by natural causes. Regardless of one's beliefs, it is important to approach cases of suspected possession with compassion, empathy and an open mind. The Catholic Church considers exorcism as a religious practice that involves the expulsion of evil spirits or demons from a person who is believed to be possessed. The Catholic Church has a specific set of guidelines for performing exorcisms, and only authorized priests who have received special training are allowed to perform them. The Catholic Church recognizes that demonic possession is a rare phenomenon, and they emphasize the importance of ruling out other possible explanations, such as natural illnesses, before attempting an exorcism. Before performing an exorcism, the priest is required to obtain permission from the bishop of their diocese, who will typically consult with medical professionals and mental health experts to confirm that there is no other explanation for the person's symptoms. During an exorcism, the priest will typically pray, read from the Bible, and use holy water and other religious objects to try to expel the demon. 
The exorcism may take place in a church or other religious setting, and the person being exorcised may be restrained to prevent harm to themselves or others. The Catholic Church stresses the importance of treating the person with compassion and respect during the exorcism process. Overall, the Catholic Church takes the issue of demonic possession seriously, but also recognizes the importance of approaching the issue with caution and discernment. The Zozo Demon The Zozo Demon is a spirit you may not have heard of. This mysterious and newly discovered entity is not one to take lightly, and the story of its existence is as frightening as it is interesting. The Zozo Demon is a mischievous spiritual entity that makes contact with humans through the use of Ouija boards. Those who have reported to come into contact with Zoho state that he reveals himself by guiding those using the Ouija board into making figure eights, before moving frantically between the letters Z and O. Zozo's interactions with humans often begin friendly and cordial, but they soon turn frightening. Zoho has been reported to curse and threaten those who are present at the Ouija board. Believers in the existence of Zoho state that he has his origins in ancient times, dating back to societies from thousands of years ago in Africa. Still, his beginnings are shrouded in mystery. However, the first textual reference to Zoho first happened in 1818, in a book with the story of a young village girl who stated that she had been possessed by three different demons called Mimi, Crapule, and one named Zozo. In 2009, after years of obscurity, the demonic presence of Zozo began to undergo significant popularity through the work of a man named Darren Evans. Evans, a man from Oklahoma in the United States, claimed that he had come into contact with a demon called Zozo. Evans published his accounts through a website. In his post, Evans detailed how he had been interested in ghosts and the occult from a young age. Still, he admitted he had never seen or experienced anything like the demon Zozo. Zozo was different. Evans stated that Zozo revealed himself regularly, too many times to count. Zozo would adopt the presence of a friendly spirit before changing to more aggressive behavior often cursing in what Evans described as looked like Latin or Hebrew. I was genuinely fascinated and startled by how many times Zozo showed up, even in many different states and many different Ouija boards, Evans wrote in his famous post. He continued to assert that Zozo also made many threats against his young daughter, who was still a toddler. Evans claims that Zozo nearly drowned her in the bathtub and infected her with an unknown affliction or illness. He stated this is when he began to suspect a demonic attack. The post by Evans soon started to gain traction among fans of the paranormal online. Readers began to tell their own stories, many with striking similarities to that of Evans. Whether or not you believe in Evans' story, many who fear the occult certainly do. In 2012, an independent feature film named I Am Zozo was released, which actually features a cameo by Darren Evans himself. Asag, the Monstrous Demon Many demons that are reported to enact cruel punishments upon humans today actually trace their histories back to ancient Sumer. Sumer is the earliest known civilization to emerge from southern Mesopotamia, and the culture of Sumer was founded on stories of the Mesopotamian underworld, which was filled with a wide array of horrific demons. A sag, known for his ability to make fish boil alive in water just by his presence alone, is a monstrous and dangerous demon. Upon his arrival, Asag was believed to be accompanied into battle with his army of rock demon offspring. A sag is known to be a large, round creature, with three legs and three arms. A sag also has no neck, and features eyes covering his entire body. His skin is dark and hard to the touch, almost like rock. In Sumerian legend, Asag is believed to be the cause of disease and plague. He is the sworn enemy of Ninurta, the Sumerian god of war, and was eventually defeated by Ninurta after fighting for days on end. Fulfilling his role of plague and disease, a sag was believed to linger inside a person's body and had the ability to enrobe any unfortunate human like their clothing. 
there are particular references to his ability to cause head fevers and to eventually cause loss of muscle function in his victims. It is believed that Asag was supposed to represent or was born out of racism and fear of the ancient Sumerian people. The Zagros Mountains and the Sumer region were home to groups like the Kassites, Guti, Assyrians, Elamites and Mitanni. These groups would raid and attack Sumerian cities and were thought as less than human by the ancient Mesopotamians. The dark, destructive demon of Asag is a direct parallel to this. Perhaps Asag is simply a symbolic myth or perhaps something much more sinister grew from the fears of the ancient Sumerians. So, what do you make of these demonic encounters? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.